All right, in this lesson, we will review how to find arc length and sector area and a few other related things. But first, we are going to learn how to convert back and forth between degrees and radians. Okay, so a new type of unit. Um, if you're looking at a semicircle, you know that a semicircle is 180 degrees. Okay, now in this new unit, if you look at a semicircle, um, you could say that the semicircle is pi radians. All right, so 180 degrees, pi radians, same thing. So with that in mind, um, if you make a fraction out of this, like if you do 180 degrees divided by pi radians, um, that has a value of 1 because 180 degrees and pi radians are the same thing. Um, or if you do pi radians over 180 degrees, that also has a value of 1 um, because they're the same thing. Okay, so overall value of 1. Now, um, so that means we can use these fractions to convert back and forth between degrees and radians. For example, if we want to convert 75 degrees to radians, you can think of it this way. We have 75 degrees. All right. Um, so if you multiply by one of those fractions, um, you want to you want to cancel out degrees. So um, you want to use the form where degrees are in the denominator. So we'll do 180 degrees in the denominator. Now in the numerator, that's the same thing as pi radians. All right, so what happens is, um, because we have degrees in the numerator and degrees in the denominator, those basically cancel out and we are left with radians. Okay. And we have pi in the numerator and we have 180 in the denominator. So we have 75 pi over 180 radians. Um, but we want to simplify this. Okay, so we have 75 pi over 180. Okay, so that's 5 pi over 12 radians. And of course, if we wanted a decimal, we could toggle it and say uh, approximately 1.31 radians. Um, but for now, let's say 5 pi over 12. Okay, so we could say 5 pi over 12 radians. Now let's go ahead and put them both, or 1.31. Okay, um, so with that in mind, pause the video and try to do number two by yourself. Okay, let's assume that you did that. So um, again, let's see, let me just change colors here for a second. All right, so what we have here is 150 degrees. Okay, and that's in the numerator. It's like 150 over one. Um, so what we want to multiply by, um, since we want to get rid of degrees, so we'll have radians, we need to make sure we put the degrees in the bottom. So um, we will put 180 degrees, that's a zero, in the denominator. And we learned that 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians, okay? That's why we can do this. So 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. All right, so multiplying by this unit ratio um, will not change anything, except it will change the units because degrees and degrees will cancel out. And what we are left with is 150 pi, okay, that's the numerator, 
over 180 radians. So 150 pi over 180. Okay, so that is 150 pi over 180. So that's 5 pi over 6. Okay, so 5 pi, 5 pi over 6 radians. Or as a decimal, that is uh, 2.62. approximately. All right, so uh, number three and four are working in the opposite direction. Now technically radians are not units. Um, you know, you don't write radians the same way that you would write three inches or three centimeters. Uh, when it's radians, you just put three. That's three radians, okay? It's just that kind of a unit that doesn't have any units. Um, it's just a number. So that's why when we have 3 fifths pi, you don't see any symbol for radians, all right? It's understood that this is radians. Um, but so I'm going to write the word radians just um, so you can understand what I'm doing. But um, radians, uh, you don't actually write the units when it's radians. It's understood. Okay, so what we have here is 3 pi over 5 radians and we want degrees so um, you can think of it as um, multiplying by uh, 180 degrees over pi radians Okay, it helps you picture it, but in reality, um, there wouldn't be any units here to cancel out in the first place. Um, but we will have no radians, so we will only have degrees. We will only have degrees. Um, notice that also the uh, pi cancels out as well. So what we're left with after that okay is uh, now we have 3 times 180 okay the pies are gone and it's over 5 alright there's no radians so it's all degrees now alright so um, you know we have radians so you put radians in the denominator uh, that way you will be left with degrees in the numerator so um, it's just a matter of simplifying this. So 3 times 180 over 5. Okay, that is 108. So that is 108 degrees. All right, so with that in mind, you should easily be able to do number 4 by yourself. So pause the video and do number four on your own. Okay, so hopefully you did that. So once again, um, we have four pi over three radians. All right, even though technically radians uh, don't have any units, I'm going to write it this way anyway just for uh, visual purposes. Um, so, since we have radians here in the numerator, uh, we are going to put radians in the denominator. So, um, we know that pi radians, which you wouldn't really write radians, okay, um, but you'll just forgive me for right now, is the same thing as 180 degrees. Okay, um, so I will cancel out the radians that really shouldn't have been there in the first place. And uh, I will also cancel out the pi. Okay, and so what you see is all that's left, all right, as far as units, we have our degrees. 
Okay, just like we wanted. Um, now the pies are gone, so what I have now is 4 times 180, okay, in the numerator, and uh, we still have that 3 in the denominator. Okay, um, so I'm just going to simplify that. Okay, and that is 240. So that is 240 degrees. Okay, for number four, we're supposed to find the circumference, and we know pi times the radius. So that is 2 pi times 10. So of course that is 20 pi inches. Um, so that is the, the circumference, unless we want a decimal. All right, we could do 20 pi and toggle it. Um, so that's 62.83. All right, for number five, we're supposed to find arc length, the length of arc AB. Okay, now anytime you're dealing with a portion of a circle, whether it's arc length or whether it's sector area, like a pizza slice, um, you should start thinking part over whole equals part over whole because that's how we do it. Okay, part over whole will always equal part over whole. Now, on the right hand side we usually do degrees okay on this side um, we do whatever the partial thing is that we're looking for and in this case we're going to do length uh, but if we were looking for sector area we would do area over here but anyway um, the degrees are easy so let's go ahead and get that out of the way you know, maybe I'll just stick with pink for now. So part over whole, so uh, degrees. So partial degrees are 20, and the degrees of the whole circle, of course, are 360. Now on the left-hand side, part over whole length, where the partial length, that's the arc length, that's what we're looking for, so we'll just call that x. Now the whole length uh, is the circumference. So um, I'm going to calculate that off to the side. All right, we know that the circumference is 2 pi times the radius. So that's 2 pi times 8. Uh, so that is 16 pi. Okay, so when we talk about part over whole, the whole length is the circumference, so that's why I put 16 pi right there. So now it's just a matter of cross multiplying and such. Okay, um, 20 over 360, I like to re reduce these. So 20 over 360, uh, that's 118th. Okay, so what I have is x over 16 pi is equal to 118th. So when I cross multiply, I get 18x, okay, along that diagonal, is equal to 16 pi. All right, um, dividing both sides by 18 is going to really give me the answer that I'm looking for here. Um, x is equal to, all right, so 16 pi over 18. Now watch how I type this in. Um, go into fraction mode immediately. 16 pi over 18. Okay, get in the habit of typing in your fractions this way instead of horizontally. Sometimes it makes a difference. Okay, so that's 8 pi over 9. Okay, and this is the length, so we're talking about centimeters. All right, so that is the arc length. Let's go ahead and write it as a decimal as well. 
so let's just toggle it. So 2.79 centimeters. Okay, would be the length of that arc. So that is how you do number five. And that is five out of ten problems on this lesson. <clears throat> so this seems like a good place to stop the video. All right, so we'll call this part one. Stay tuned for part two, the rest of this lesson.